So um, this ties very closely into Logpoint in the alert section. So let's jump right into this. We're going to go and click on our little configuration down to knowledge base. Once we're inside our knowledge base window, we have alert rules. Alert rules are basically how Logpoint, how Logpoint generates incidents and alerts together. Now, I'm actually going to build one right now, and I'm going to leverage part of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, right? So this is on this is on Logpoint's corporate website, and you'll see that we have a, a we have a whole team of threat research analysts that go through and understand and map the differences between the MITRE ATT&CK framework, put that into Logpoint format. You can see it here in front of you. Basically, we're not rewriting anything from, from, from MITRE. We're just putting it inside our own format that is easy for our customers to see and understand. The one that I'm going to take a look at today is Microsoft Office product spawning Windows shell. This has got to be I don't know what the percentage is, but it's the majority of ransomware type attacks where somebody receives a phishing type email or attachment, click it, and something executes locally. Most of the time behind the scenes, they don't see anything executing. So you'll see here what it's doing. We've got one word, Excel, PowerPoint, you know, one of the typical office applications goes and then executes a shell script, a bash shell, you know, whichever one of these, a WMIC, you know, those are the Windows instructions. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to go and build this real time. So we'll go back to our demo. In all of these alert rules, you see here, malware detected, Dropbox 5, Dropbox, so on and so on. We are going to go and create a new one. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. Going to go a little quicker just to copy and paste that out. So I'm going to copy the name of that in. Paste that inside my name over here. And then for the actual search, for the search query itself, that is the search query that we're looking to execute. So come and I'll put that in my search query over here. And then uh, the next one it has, we have a spot for a little description. So we'll put in our little description so we can tag that back and see what's going on. Uh, the time frame is 10 minutes. So let's have a look what's going on here. I've given it a name. I have a query on what's going on. Um, I'm going to say from all repositories within Logpoint. Remember, we haven't touched on this, but... Um, Logpoint stores its repository, its, its log information in various repositories, like one for Windows, one for Unix, uh, one for firewalls. Clearly, when you're executing a search, time is of the essence, so you possibly want to li limit this to all your Windows actual search repositories. So you'll see I can click on that and I can say Windows only, because it's pointless running this for an, for an Office application on a Mac machine or a Unix machine. Um, I'll then say flush on trigger, which means once this item has been detected, clean it out of the buffer. If we see it again, it'll generate a new one, but this one will not linger and continue. Next, we have any attack tags. So once again, we see these tags here. The attack tags are the command and script interpreter, command execution. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste that one in over here so we can paste that down. Go and go. We, so sorry, this one we just pick it out. So I forget what the tags were. There were a, a 1059. So let's see if I can type this in T1059 and click that. I won't continue on for the rest of these. Everybody understands it. Um, we have log sources, um, anything that's pertinent to this um, alert as well. Now, what's interesting now, I can say to myself, what is the risk? So the condition here, the condition is greater than, let's say, three. And the risk is now going to be a high risk. The risk calculation function use the maximum to go and calculate this. All of this, by the way, is very well detailed, all self-explanatory in the low point documentation. Next, who's this assigned to? I'd like to assign this to the NOC user. And it's going to be manageable by the SOC user. So the security operations guy can manage it but it's assigned to the NOC user. <clears throat> and then you'll see a little later on, I'm going to show you how we present this data. We don't have to present a raw log event message that's a little complex to understand. We can use Ginger to go and rewrite this log to make it in a very easy, presentable manner for the user to go and actually graphically visualize this and they can understand that. So once that's done, we have our alert. The alert is now added. Now, the last thing, would I like a notification? Do you want to be email alerted, SMS page, whatever the case is from this alert? Because this will generate an incident and the incident can then be alerted higher up as necessary. Thank you.